Good morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God that he has allowed us to go through another week without incident in my family, hopefully in your family. But we know that there are plenty out there that have fallen victim to the coronavirus. Some have lost loved ones. We pray for those that are bereaved everywhere. And on this past week, we laid to rest uh, one of our dear own, the Honorable John Robert Lewis, one whom I had the opportunity to get to know personally when I was in the military. I met uh, the Honorable John Lewis up on Capitol Hill after I was, while I was part of a task force up there. And he is indeed one to emulate and one that we would like to pattern our lives afterwards. He was a serious warrior. He was truly, truly a man of God. And he lived for and strived for and tried to teach others how to live a godly life. And from that, I mean, after having known him and witnessing his funeral, I was able to witness the funeral or be a part of it via the television. Thank God for that. And I chose this morning to um, title my topic after something that he said. Something that he said that just resonated in my spirit. John Roberts said that we need to learn to get into good trouble. Learn to get into good trouble. So I chose for a topic today. Let us get into good trouble. A scripture this morning is taken from the book of St. John. St. John, the fifth chapter, beginning at the second verse. Verse 2 through verse 9 is my supporting text. And the word of God reads, now there in Jerusalem, coming from the King James Version, now there at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time that in that case he saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath day. I chose for a topic this morning. Let us get into good trouble. All my life when I heard the word trouble, all I ever thought about were bad things. Trouble meaning something bad. There can be good trouble. Troubled. Trouble sometimes in life, church, is necessary for new revelations. It is then when we find ourselves in trouble and we, we, we petition to God in prayer or we go to God in prayer, we find out that God is trying to tell us something or God is trying to show us something. A new revelation is about to take place in our lives and a revelation is a divine mystery. Revelation is related to a vision or something of surprise, something that God is trying to show us. God is trying to tell us something. John 15 and 13 says, No greater love hath a man that he lay down his life for others or for his friends. And when I think back and I reflect back on what John Lewis, the Honorable John Lewis was saying is, he said, sometimes 
You have to stand up for something because a person that won't stand for something will fall for anything. And we thank God for the John Lewis's of our lives, those that have the intestinal fortitude and those that have been commissioned and ordained and from the, I'm sure, from before he was even thought about in his mother's womb, God knew what he was going to be in this world and how much of an impact that he would have on us in our lives. John said, when you know something, you need to tell somebody. He said, if you know something, tell somebody. And if you need to say something, say something. Don't sit there with your mouth closed. Say something. Say what's on your mind. And eventually enough people will get on board and, and all of the protesting and hopefully all of this protesting that we're doing is not in vain because we too are out there. We're all out there fighting for a reason. But John said, let us get into good trouble. Meaning going out there and fighting for what's right. Going out there and letting people know that you have a voice. Going out there and letting people know that you're no different from somebody else because of the color of your skin. We all bleed red blood and we're all Christ's children. No matter what color, we are all God's children. I'm reminded of a story in the Bible about being troubled when God, when God sent an angel down and went down at the angel went down at a certain time of the season to trouble the waters for healings. Troubling the water for healing took place, and, and whenever we, the waters were being troubled, church, the waters were being agitated or the waters were being stirred up so that healing could take place. All of the civil rights activists got into trouble for our good, church. All of those civil rights activists over the years and even nowadays were out there marching. They got into trouble for our good. This again was good trouble. And some of those people were Martin Luther King Jr., Reverend Ralph Abernathy, Reverend John Lewis, Reverend Jesse Jackson, Rosa Parks, Andrew Young, and even back during slavery, Harriet, Harriet Tubman also, she got into good trouble. She got into good trouble by creating the Underground Railroad. Abraham Lincoln got into good trouble by signing the Emancipation Proclamation Church. Back in the Bible, during the, during the, in the Old Testament, under the, in the book of Judges, God, the Bible says, chose Gideon to deliver the Israelites from the Midianites. I'm reminded of the story of Gideon or, Gideon or Jerubbabel, who was a military leader, a judge, and a prophet. God was angry with the Israelites for falling into sin once again and worshiping false gods and idols. And God chose Gideon to fight for him and to go to battle for him and the Bible says that Gideon started out with 30,000 soldiers, but ultimately ended up with only 3,000 soldiers. He fought the good fight. And he went out and he got, Gideon got into what's called good trouble. In the book, in the book of Rahab, Rahab who was considered prostitute. Back then, a prostitute. Rahab was a Canaanite woman living in Jericho. Rahab is known for what she, like I said, for her prostituting. But also Rahab was considered a biblical heroine. According to the Bible in the book of Joshua, before conquering Canaan, Joshua sent two men out to spy secretly. But the king got word and asked Rahab to reveal to them who the and where these spies were. But Rahab in turn denied knowing the whereabouts of these spies. But Rahab had hid them in the attic. Her alibi was, I saw them, but I don't know which way they went. As a result of her taking up for God's people, she and her family were spared their lives because Rahab chose to get into good trouble, not bad trouble. The three Hebrew boys, the Hebrew, three Hebrew boys refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. And as a result, they were placed in the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar's intent was to put them in the fiery furnace to burn them to smithereens. 
But because of who they were and because of the God that they served, the God wouldn't allow, our God would not allow this to happen to them. They chose to get into good trouble. They refused to bow down to anybody other than our true and living God. I say to you today, church, find some good trouble to get into. Do something that's worthy. Do something that is pleasing in God's eyesight. I say today, if I perish, if I perish getting in good trouble, let me perish. If I perish getting into good trouble, let me perish. For I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord, and I'm going to do what I feel is right in God's sight. Why are we going through troubled waters with all these things that are going on today? Why are we going through troubled waters? We're going through troubled waters because your enemies can't swim. He's taking you through these troubled waters and things that we seem that seem like we are never going to get to the end of and that we're never going to get through. But I tell you, church, God is right there with us and he's going to see us through all of this. God is sending through sending us through troubled times or turbulent times because he wants to improve us so that our enemies can't harm us, church. And I close with this. Charles Darwin said, it's not the straight or the most intelligent who survive in today's society, but those who can best manage change. And we are going through change right now, church. But these are good changes. These are changes that are going to be for the good. It may not feel like it's good right now. It doesn't feel good to us going through these things. But ultimately, God is going to bring us out of it, church. Be encouraged today. He said in his word once again that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And I know that God is not one that should lie. So I stand on God's word and I ask you today to stand on God's unchanging word and hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because God is able, church, to do exceedingly and abundant above all that we can think or ask. So remember, get into good trouble like John Robert Lewis said. Get into good trouble, and in the end, we will all be rewarded for it. God bless you, and heaven smile upon you. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for allowing us go to come before your people, O oh God, to proclaim the gospel. We pray, O oh gracious God, that something was said to encourage somebody. Father God, we need you right now. We stand in the need of a Savior right now, but God, you said in all things we ought to give thanks. We pray for the bereaved families right now, oh God. We pray for all of those that are sick among us as a result of COVID and for any other reasons that they're sick, oh God. We pray for the families that have lost loved ones because of this dreaded disease, oh God. We pray, Father God, for that peace in their lives, oh God. That peace and that joy, that unspeakable joy, oh God, that cometh in the morning. Lord, we pray for the family of the Honorable John Robert Lewis, oh God. We pray for our leaders, oh God, all over the world and all over the country, dear God. Lord, continue to bless our church families. And Lord, we pray that soon and very soon that we'll be able to come together once again under one roof. Not just Reynolds Chapel, oh God, but all of our church families out there everywhere. We pray for our pastors, our ministers, oh God, as they continue to spread the gospel via the internet. Oh God, we thank you for this tool, oh God, that we have. Satan thought he had us, oh God, when he shut down the church, when the churches had to be shut down because of COVID. But the God that we serve always has a ram in the bush. And we thank you, oh God, right now for Jesus. Lord, we love you, we adore you, and forever praise your holy and righteous name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these blessings. Amen and amen again. Thanks once again for tuning in with us on today. We thank you for fellowshipping with us where the word of God has gone forward and we pray that it has not and will not fall on deaf ears. We pray that something was said or done that might prick your heart or encourage you to just to run on just a little while longer to see what the end is going to be. We pray that you will continue to seek God's face and continue to pray and ask God to heal whatever you're going through because God has the powers to settle these troubled waters. And we ask that you continue to pray and seek God's face in all that you do. God bless you and heaven smile upon you.